this is this is gonna be two. Just so you know, you, you guys stop me when I get to seventeen. <laughs> Just to let you know where I am in the chronology of everything, I just finished editing episode 8 of season 4. And it's uh, finished uploading to that video is actually processing as I record this intro. You know, because I'm trying to get up on Patreon and everything. And then, after I record episode 11 of season 4, which I'm getting ready to do, I'll go and I'll edit episode 9. You know, that's kind of how this is working out. You know, the workflow situation. And it was interesting because episode 8 was really mad women. Or... You know, bitches be crazy. <laughs> well, you know me. Like, I'm, uh, I kind of take both sides. Like, I'm all, pretty much always on Peggy's side. Usually I'm on Dawn's side when it comes to Betty because she's just so goddamn annoying. You know, I'm usually on Sally's side, I, mainly because she is a fucking psycho. It should be called Mad Women just for her. Mad Girls, maybe, you know. My God, she's nuts. <laughs> I still think she killed Miss Blankenship. I'm just saying. My head cannon is she killed the bitch. <laughs> like, stick her in a fucking room by herself. Miss Blankenship went in to check her. Sally poisoned her drink or some shit. Let her go back out there. It's like, yeah, I'll teach that bitch. <laughs> so, you know. But it brings up because really, like, for me, it's, you know, a lot of these, especially with this is a show in the 60s, there's a lot of gender roles being explored here. And, you know, you know, guys are against the girls because they're guys and those are girls and, you know, um, shit like that. But what this show has really done without ever hitting us over the head with it is show us that pretty much everybody's nuts. Even, and this is where, I, this is the point I'm coming to here. Francis, who I thought was the adult of the show, besides Joan. Francis is the adult of the show. He's basically, he's basically dead. You know, I. I thought Duck was the adult of the show, and it turned out, man, that dude's completely fucking insane. You know, he was the adult for a while. I thought Lane was an adult, but then he, you know, puts a fucking steak against his dick in a public restaurant. You know? I thought Francis was an adult, and he backs him to Don shit and, makes, and lies about buying a boat. I assume it's a lie. Just to get his shit out of there, because he don't want to look at it. See? Like, nobody gets out of this show unscathed, man. Like, the guys are getting hit just as hard as the girls are on this show. <laughs> They're all fucking nuts. Is there a single character who's not three-dimensional on this show? You know, because everybody's nuts and everybody does things wrong. And I'm a pretty mature person. I've been immature. I've been petty, you know. Pro I probably have been petty in the last week at some point. So I can't think of an example, but I'm sure I have. I'm sure I've been childish in the last week. This is all of us. There is no adult. <laughs> when when you have a group of people. Like you, this is a group of what? People that actually get lines and characterization, let's say around 20. There's around 20 people. This group of 20 people, there's no adults here. <laughs> They're all childish because human beings are childish. Because is there a single character? Uh, Francine, I guess, isn't a three-dimensional character, but she's such a bit player. She may show up three times a season. But anybody who shows up in more than half the episodes each season... It's going to be well-rounded. They're going to be three-dimensional. So I guess my the point of this meandering intro is the fact that, like, I just appreciate that they do that, that they've done this. You know, like, the, the, the accomplishment of the show is they've created characters that feel like real people. A lot of shows don't do that. A lot of shows can't pull that off. We had five seasons of Stargate Atlantis. And uh, Joe Morton, I think, uh, I can't remember the lead protagonist's character name at all. I just can't remember it at all. The actor's name is, his name, first name is Joe. I can't remember what his last name is. But he's a, you know, he's the lead, he's a cowboy. He's the Captain Kirk of the series, right? Five seasons. Just, there's no three-dimensionality there at all. Like, he's a great action hero. He's got great quips. He's funny. You root for him. But he's not a three-dimensional character. He doesn't feel like a real person. You know, so, I mean, that was five seasons. That was a hundred episodes. And they couldn't pull it off. This show only had 92 episodes total, man. And they pulled it off for a little bit over halfway through the series. So, just wanted to give them a minute of kudos. That's all I'm saying. Nice sand in the weirdest places. Chum's wow. Beach. Don't be so sure it's sand. What a great first line. That was a joke, by the way. I don't know if I've ever... I, I don't really objectify characters very much. I don't tell you who I'm attracted to and who I'm not attracted to. But I just want to make this clear. I'm actually not attracted to Peggy, the actress, or the character... They're just not my type. I'm never coming from a place like, wow, she's really hot, you know? 
it's more, I love the personality of the character. I really relate to it a lot. And I don't want her to end up like Don Draper, right? You know, so I'm rooting for her. And when people treat her like a dick, you know, she's vulnerable. And so I'm kind of protective. So I feel that. So you went in. Like this motherfucker. Get off her, motherfucker. I like the letter. Look at her with this hard dick press. That's gives her leg and right? shit. I can't believe she's dating this dumbass. Even if it's a group thing, it's still fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it's not a group thing because now they're God, just the two of them. Look at them. <laughs> She's going to hit that. Unbelievable. So, just to put a button on that, this is never coming from a place of attraction. So, just so you know. Sometimes that can really get in the way of uh, reactions because Sophie reacts is so fucking attractive to Damon. I had to stop watching her Vampire Diaries reactions because it's like he could never do anything wrong, no matter how fucking horrible he was. You look like you're in the Olympics. Jesus, this is, this is just painful. Watch. This is why I'm talking so much about not this scene. This is awful. Please, man. It was like the movies. Gosh, thank One God. We're listening to a... And now that we're past that scene, I'll actually pause it just to finish my thought. Because I got I got on a tangent here. I had to stop watching Ratchet because he would do some heinous shit and she would just forgive it immediately. You know? And, you know, we don't really watch reactions. I don't think we watch reactions for their value judgments. Now that I, think, now that I say this. We're not looking for people like, oh my God, racism is wrong, you know? Oh my God, gender equality is, is necessary or, you know, whatever. Drinking's bad. Cigarettes bad. You know, we're not looking for that from our reactors. We get it because they're human beings and they're going to react to what they're presented with. They will have an opinion to what they're presented with. And see, for me, typically, it's, it's from a writing point of view, usually. But, now sometimes there's just some shit you just don't do. Like, we're not on a date, man, you know. I mean, <laughs> there are do's and don'ts I've gone into, and I have strong opinions about shit like that, right? So, you know, I have strong opinions on a lot of shit, but um, it just occurred to me. I don't think we're look, we're watching reactions to hear a person's political and, geo, political and geosocial opinions on topics, right? Even if they're well-informed, it tends to be boring. That's not what we're doing. But the problem for me was she was such a stand for Damon, it actually got in the way. It was, she would just, like, oh, my God. You know, she would just completely brush up. He would, like, attempt to rape somebody or some shit, right? He would rip the throat out of a, a woman and drink her like a Capri Sun, smash her body up against her his head, forehead like it was a beer can, toss her in the fucking bushes. And two seconds later, Sophie would be talking about how hot he is and he's so attractive and all this shit. It's like... Yeah, I'm going to have to tap out. <laughs> I just, I guess everybody has their limits, right? You know, so it can get annoying if, like, a, a attraction to the actor interferes with how they react, to, how they interact with and re respond to the character, I guess is what I'm saying. This is a long sidebar. I apologize. But, you know, it's just fascinating because I'm, fa I'm a reaction fan first. I'm a reactor second. You know? So I always see things from a fan's point of view first. And... It could, you know, you could be like, well, you're just making excuses for, for that character because you're attracted to him. Well, in this case, I just want to make clear or not. So, anyway, enough with all that shit. Let's get back into this shit. We're only two minutes into the episode. <laughs> he brings her to the hospital. Oh, yeah. Keeps we got Satan back in here. I think he's been in one other episode, Nobody right? Cares. He was in a couple episodes of Fargo. I love this fucking actor, man. He's so good. Well, that's a nice way I to I think his around. name is Ray, Ray Wise. <laughs> Don't get up. I was only there for about six months. I didn't really know him. Oh, right. Um, what was that? That was very weird, right? You picked up on that, right? Flory. <laughs> what were you talking about, dude? Was it something else? Look, you're with your family. I shouldn't have... You're a dick. You didn't. What's going on? Lucky strike. Oh, shit. What? That's right. Out this motherfucker. Me, okay? You're winding me out up. Out this no? motherfucker. Damn. Out this... Roger true. should have said something, man. Someone should tell Lee Carter Jr. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what a great way to find out. Because I somebody needs it. Roger needs this, man. He should have confided him the second he heard about this shit. Lying motherfucker. You okay, son? No, he ain't okay. We're fucked. Whenever admin meet, all they do is brag and brag. And it's hard not to get rattled. Oh, he's rattled, all right. William, you don't have to excuse me. Yeah, I got to drop it to you. Sorry. Sweetheart, I swear to you, I wouldn't do this if it wasn't serious. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's got it. This has you have to take action immediately, man. Was that lunch or dinner? What a pleasant surprise! There's nothing much to celebrate. Oh, okay. Yet. Just, okay, I thought this was the office for a second. Protested. I sent her for food just to get rid of her. Dude, you need to know. 
Anyway. Shut the fuck up and listen, premature. motherfucker. What around here? Jesus. Muzzle you? this son of a bitch. Bring a dog <laughs> muzzle in any time you go to him. John Flory. Lucky Strike is going there. Yeah, we're fucked. What? We're all fucked. <laughs> you call Don immediately. What? Dude, you better answer this phone. Get your dick out of her and answer the phone, motherfucker. This is crucial. This is as exciting as that whole uh, the uh, season finale last season. Like when everybody finds out the news. It's Pete. Have you heard anything about Lucky Strike leaving? <laughs> no. Ken heard from somebody at BBDO that Lucky's coming over. Wait, Cooper. Meet me in the office. Wait, Cooper. <laughs> God damn it. What happened? Dude, this is... I'm not sure. Sorry. I got to get my dick wet some other time. <laughs> I love this shit. I love the, the the energy of this. Each character finding out and confronting people and shit. What's going on? Answer us, motherfucker. Came here, heard that Lucky Strike is leaving. But they've already left. What? Don't try to act surprised, bitch. Flory. He's an account executive at BBDO. That's where they're going. No. That's motherfucker. Impossible. You're not a good actor. I'm telling you, it's impossible. You're not a good actor. <laughs> you gonna fake a phone call, motherfucker? Lose your temper. You gonna fake a phone call? Somebody call Lane in London? Yeah, I don't think he'll go back yeah. to sleep. Could I get a drink? Hell no, man. We can't afford a drink anymore. <laughs> bitch ass. You making a fake phone call. He's calling the fucking Weather Channel. Yeah, bitch. Lee! Roger Sterling. Bitch ass. From your agency? This non compost <sighs> meant this doesn't mean you have to listen to the board. This it's is painful, bullshit. Man. Just Lee. admit it. God damn. 30 I guess years? he has it put on a show, man. I have to Fuck hear it on the street? How would you even pull this off, man? This would be like doing a fake reaction to something you've already seen. How, how do you pull that off? Fake ass bitch. You gotta leave long enough pauses for them to talk and shit. Nobody can hear anything. Like, I, I would never even attempt it, man. You'd be so busted. Like, you ain't talking to nobody. Anyway. Tomorrow you put morning, on a show. We're getting wait six a.m. to ride on this. I'll do it. I've known him half my life. I need yeah. a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is bad. This is very, very bad. Midnight. Yep. Remember when I said he was only going to take two, two episodes off from drinking? Looks like... Obviously, we'd like to avoid that information. Yeah. Out. It's like she would tell. What happened? The look she gave him, like, bitch, please. <laughs> hey, watch it. You have to keep Man, a clear fuck head. fuck that. There is no clear head. Well... You can't have all your eggs in one basket anyways. We're going to have to find something else. That face. What the hell are you talking about, woman? You're the most hireable man on Madison Avenue. I'm not at that point. <laughs> you got a bail in the company? Jesus. She's cutthroat, man. Damn, she already had the razor blade out cutting motherfuckers' throats, man. It's been two minutes. I just got her all worked up. She made such a stink and that thing's at least another day away. Oh, can I see her? Have you been drinking? Really? Is that a problem, motherfucker? They're uh, business associates, right? too, so this is a little inappropriate to be telling him this. Can I speak with you candidly? Hell no. Always. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea, man. I think I'm more to you than a typical father-in-law. You are. That's the problem. It's about business. <laughs> There's no business in here, son. <laughs> there is now, motherfucker. We may have lost Lucky Strike. I'm sure this agency was a thrill. But you've oh, had your shit. folly. That's not right, Tom. I haven't stayed at Vic Chemical for 28 years because I love it. It's because I have a family. Oh, I see what he's saying. I really get what he's... I get where he's coming from. I do. I get where he's coming from. You need stability, man. Ted Shaw? I hate him. He's a, he's a bitch guy. Ass. He's not interested in me. He's just trying to hobble Don. There's no reward in going down with the ship. I love how that's everybody's... Everybody's first thought. And here, man, here's the thing about Peter. He's loyal, man. What he just said right there, rather than him like scheming to get out, that's why I'm probably too hard on him. Why don't you just go back character. to the candy machines and we'll wait? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the air conditioning guy's supposed to be there at eight. <sighs> she has terrible choice in men. Absolutely fucking awful. He's here to hit it and quit it. Usually like this. Well, enjoy these last few minutes, and there probably will just be a few minutes uh, of uh, peace and quiet, right? I just walked out of there. 
Yeah, yeah, over. right, motherfucker. You're in a hotel. I see. Our clients need to hear this from us. I know, Bert. Don't wait for me. Yeah, <laughs> you bitch ass. I'm standing by Lee's reception. <laughs> I didn't want to have to pay for a long distance. <laughs> Very well, then. Star 69 and shit. <laughs> Play the game. God, it's unbelievable, man. No champagne. I say he's got cancer. cancer. It's a bigger brain. Now, everyone, no, it's a bigger brain with this fucking blind ass. Consolidate their business at Batten, Barton, Durston, and... Fuck them. So what does this mean? That's our ass. That's what it means. Now Donald Draper, partner, creative director. Excuse me while I pass the book. He needed a piece of paper to read that? That was Pete a very Campbell simple statement. Campbell and Ken Cosgrove will handle calls to clients. Those are the only... Which means that nothing should change. Yeah, right. Nothing will change. We're going to push ourselves shoulder to shoulder, and we're going to overcome this and succeed tenfold, and it will be exhilarating. All right, Eisenhower. Not exactly patent yet, but that was definitely an Eisenhower speech. <laughs> Thank you.